Now, the Wabash Valley's most watched newscast continues with Rick Semler and sports. Good evening. We will get to our in the paint highlights in just a few minutes. First, though, we have a very special story for you. You know, one of the great things about sports, it allows individuals to do things they never knew was possible. That was certainly the case last night for one Terre Haute North student. When you play for the Terre Haute North Boys basketball program, it's more than just a team. We treat every kid as they are part of our basketball family. You can make the argument no one in the North basketball family loves the Patriots more than freshman manager R.J. Drake, who can't play competitive basketball because a stroke during birth left him with limited use of the right side of his body. You can just tell by his eyes that you know he really looks up to these players and he tries to be involved as much as he can. He has a passion and loves the game of basketball. He uh, has a great respect for our guys. He comes every day and works hard. He's probably their biggest fan. About a month ago, Terre Haute North freshman head coach Mike Gant came up with an idea that he thought would allow RJ to fulfill a lifelong dream. Last year, I, I, I had played my managers. Um, you know, a lot of people go out for the team, but they can't all make it. So if you got a chance to, and it just kind of hit me, so I talked to his mom, um, talked to the coach, coaching staff over at West Vigo, and they were all receptive to it. I talked to our athletic director and our coach, and we got him on the roster. He did some practices with us. I was really shocked and really excited. I thought it would be really wonderful, and I just couldn't believe how, how nice it was. Even though Drake was practicing with the North Patriots, he didn't know he was actually going to get to play in a real game. Coach Gant didn't tell him until Tuesday night that he would play Wednesday in Norse freshman game at West Vigo. I was really excited and really glad that I could do it. We talked to him on the phone and he was really, really excited but really nervous. Wednesday night in the home video you see here, RJ number 42 in blue dressed for the Patriots Vikings freshman contest and in the fourth quarter he was put in the game. He wasn't hesitant once he got in. He missed his first couple of shots but then on his third attempt RJ hit this jumper sending fans and his teammates into an uproar in what was an emotional night at the Green Dome. It was really special and I loved them when they were cheering me on and all that so. It was amazing. You know, it's that moment you hope you're always going to have as a parent. And to have all the people there supporting him and the teammates go out and meet him on the court. And it was just amazing. RJ Drake's time on the floor may have only been a few minutes, but the memories will last a lifetime. It was really fun to do it. And I was really glad that Coach Gant was, uh, was really thrilled for me to do it. And then when he did it, the whole crowd on both sides for North and West Vigo cheered for him and the team ran out there and got him on the floor and it was really neat. It was ex and, I, and I didn't see him stop smiling for the rest of the night. Well, I know how much it meant to him and I think he's had a smile on his face all day long at school. He's told everyone about it. It was special for him and uh, I hope it's something that he remembers for a long time also. It was one of the, pr it was the proudest night of our life. <laughs> Wow, what a story that was. I, I think Coach Wolfley, it's a safe bet that RJ is going to remember that for a pretty long time. And kudos to both Terre Haute North and West Vigo High School to allow something like that to take place. So great, great sportsmanship. Very true. Time now for our special Thursday edition of In the Paint. Like our viewers at home here, I'm going to have to put some sunglasses on with uh, <laughs> Ross's bright pink shirt here. I hope he's not blinding you guys at home there. We're both very competitive, and we came up with the idea to wear pink tonight. Susan G. Coleman over yes. at the Holman Center. Yes. So we're both wearing yes. pink, and I finally had the chance to outdo Rick. He's not wearing a brighter pink shirt than I am. Yes. There we go. Yes. But the girls' basketball sectional is taking center stage tomorrow night. We've got the boys coming on tonight. Uh, Sullivan, West Vigo, Terre Haute South, Vincennes, Lincoln, and Washington. Just to name a few of the games. Very busy on. night. We'll start in the WIC, where first place implications were on the line tonight between Sullivan and West Vigo. Win by the Golden Arrows, and they clinched the WIC outright, but a victory by the Vikings, and they guarantee themselves at least a share of the conference title. It was homecoming tonight at West Vigo. Third quarter, Rhett Smith goes up strong inside. The Sullivan star had 28 points. West Vigo would build a big 13-point lead in the second half. Big reason why was the play of Ryan Crowther. Crowther, two of his 17 off the great feed from Scott West. Sullivan would rally. David Bedwell drives and scores. The Golden Arrows down five in the fourth quarter. Just over five minutes to play. West Vigo up three. Huge play in the ballgame. The Vikings' Jordan Hauser drives 
takes the contact, scores, and has fouled. Hauser led West Vigo with 24 points. Look at this. West Vigo upsets Class 3A, 6th ranked Sullivan, 69-67. The win guarantees West Vigo at least a share of this year's WIC title. Ross. Wow. Now, because of the bad weather that hit the area last week, the Terre Haute South boys basketball team hasn't played in 13 days. It's been a long couple weeks for the Braves. They've wanted to get back out on the court considering their last game was that heartbreaking 46-45 overtime loss to Terre Haute North. Well, tonight, South was at Bloomfield. Early on, the Braves working from the inside out. Jeff Turner kicks to Jermaine Smith. One, two, three, count them up. South's in business. Now watch Anthony McGill get in the passing lane. No one's catching him. Easy bucket for McGill. And on the Bloomfield end, it's Kyle Doan on the wing. Nice move to get to the cup off the window, and that one's good for Doan. But South, too strong tonight. Derek Schaus doing what he does to the rim. That's pretty efficient, Rick. South's pressure took over, and the Braves come away from Bloomfield with a 67-44 to win. We still have a lot of basketball to show you tonight. That's right. When we come back, we'll check in on Washington, Vincennes, Lincoln, Northview, Clay City, and Bar Reef. Stay with us. Welcome back to In the Paint. A big congratulations goes out to Washington senior Cody Zeller. Today, he was selected to play in the McDonald's All-American boys basketball game. The future Indiana Hoosier is the third Zeller to become a McDonald's All-American. His brother Luke made the team in 2005, and Tyler rocked the arches back in 2008. Tonight, Cody and the Hatchets were in action at Owen Valley. Tyler's performance from the Carolina Duke game last night had the Patriots students chanting, Tyler's better. Cody says, wait a second, top shelf right there for the Ute. Now Dylan Irvin picks up the steal for Washington, and he cruises in for the layup. Irvin got heckled for not dunking it. He just laughed it off. What a great player he is. Finally, the Hatchets go to Colin Arnold. The sophomore uses every inch of the rim, and it drops. Got to give love to the Patriot students for the wit tonight, but this one was all Washington, 72 to 39. Vincennes Lincoln was at home. The Alice's hosted Evansville Modern Day. Here's some toughness for you. The high-low Nick Klump gets the bucket and one. Then Jansen Goodwin drives. He's hacked, and he gets it to drop three-point play. Finally, Jordan shots. Big board and stick back for the Alice's. He's fouled as well. How about the three-point plays in Vincennes tonight? Alice's win, 55 to 48. Busy stretch for Bar Reeve. The Vikings were playing their third game in six days tonight when they hosted South Knox. They didn't look tired at all. Tyler Schulteis backs down and gets the deuce. Then a slick bounce pass to Brayton Lamb under the rack. He sticks it in. The Vikings, Jonathan Gingrich. Great spin move in the low post for a pair. And the Vikings knock off South Knox 43-31. Rick? Just like Terre Haute South, Northview tonight played their first game in 13 days. The Knights were at home hosting South Putnam, Trent Lancaster, Perfect on the three for the Knights. The senior had 16 points. But then Zach Hole on the breakout for Northview gets the uncontested layup. Northview wins at home 58-42. Also in Clay County tonight, Clay City hosted North Central. The Eels Ben Danker with a tough shot over the defender. On the other end, North Central with the mini alley-oop here. Aaron Belgrad finishes for the T-Birds. This one, though, goes to Clay City. 64 to 51. If you've noticed tonight, Ross and I are wearing the pink shirts, one a little brighter than the other. <laughs> we are showing our support for the ISU women's basketball team, who tonight played their Think Pink game. The Lady Sycamores are trying to raise funds for Susan G. Komen Foundation and Breast Cancer Awareness. ISU hosted Missouri State early on. ISU out and running. Deja Maddox with a nice finish. The Lady Sycamores up three. Nice passing by ISU. Kelsey Cooley with a perfect post pass. The Shannon Thomas. Thomas had 11 for ISU. Brittany Shane with a nice save for ISU. They leave her open and she drills the three. Shane led the way with 13, but it came in a loss. Missouri State wins 63 to 50. That does it for our Thursday night in the paint. Tomorrow night, girls sectional semifinal action. Have a good evening.